G'day readers, vampire lovers, lovers of the gothic, lovers of the Victorian age and teachers and students of Mary Shelley's masterpiece, Frankenstein. This is Dan Abramson from Osti Classics, publisher of great books, classic and new. Shelley's Frankenstein was so new for its time that it had no horror genre or even gothic genre to follow, but largely created it. Or did she? There were a kind of horror stories before Frankenstein, which was the vampire legend and folklore. John Polidori wrote The Vampire, the first English language vampire story published 1st of April 1819, and he knew Mary Shelley. They both were friends with Lord Byron. In fact, John Polidori modelled the anti-hero vampire in The Vampire on Lord Byron. Feeling jilted by, by Lord Byron, they were possibly lovers and at least very close friends. Polidori's story was actually first published with Lord Byron's name as the author, which was incorrect and due to a misunderstanding by the publisher. In case you didn't know, Shelley wrote Frankenstein in a challenge by Lord Byron, where they were staying in a villa near Lake Geneva in 1816, called The Year Without a Summer, which was dark and rainy because Indonesia's Mount Tambora, the Pompeii of the East, had created a volcanic winter. Lord Byron, Mary and Percy Shelley, Claire Clermont, Mary Shelley's stepsister, and John Polidori were there. Mary Shelley and Lord Byron's circle were intimately familiar with the vampire folk story tradition. We would have to wait more than 50 years for the better known English language vampire stories, 1872 for Camilla by Sheridan Le Fanu, and 1897 for both Dracula by Bram Stoker and The Blood of the Vampire by Florence Marriott. Similarities between Dr. Frankenstein's creature and vampires included wandering, being nocturnal, fear of them procreating, superhuman strength, encounters with a mass of hostile humans, and that their lives were from death, but in different ways. First of all, wandering. Frankenstein walks in emotional pain, cut off from and rejected by humans, just as vampires are cut off from humankind living in limbo. First of all, they're nocturnal, and second of all, they must feed on humans. Anyone they love, typically they feed on. We find vampires wandering in search of prey in Dracula and Carmilla. Frankenstein's creature is forced to be nocturnal too, as he is rejected by humans and frightens them. The difference is that Frankenstein's creature performs acts of kindness by night. Quoting, My mode of life in my hovel was uniform. During the morning I attended the motions of the cottages, and when they were dispersed in various occupations, I slept. The remainder of the day was spent in observing my friends. When they had retired to rest, if there was any moon or the night was starlight, I went into the woods and collected my own f food and fuel for the cottage. When I returned, as often as, as it was necessary, I cleared their path from the snow, and performed those offices that I had seen done by Felix. I afterwards found that these labours, performed by an invisible hand, greatly astonished them, and once or twice I heard them on these occasions utter the words, good spirit, wonderful, but I did not then understand the signification of these terms. In The Blood of the Vampire, Harriet Brandt is a long way from home, and is foiled in every attempt to form a relationship with others, causing either severe illness or death in everyone she gets close to. In Polidori's story, The Vampire, Lord Ruthven, the vampire, is spiteful and enjoys causing pain and death, just as the creature in Frankenstein does, who wants to spite his creator, Dr. Victor Frankenstein, for creating and then abandoning him. Fear of procreation of the other species. In she Shelley's novel, Frankenstein, there is the aborted attempt to create a female counterpart to give the creature company. Dr. Victor Frankenstein starts this project at his creature's request, or demand, but then abandons it in disgust. Quoting, One of the first results of those sympathies for which the demon thirsted would be children, and a race of devils would be propagated upon the earth, who might make the very existence of the species of man a condition precarious and full of terror. Had I a right, for my own benefit, to inflict this curse upon everlasting generations? I, trembling with passion, tore to pieces the thing on which I was engaged. I left the room and, locking the door, made a solemn vow in my heart never to resume my labours. In The Vampire, John Polidori doesn't refer to fear of Lord Ruthven procreating to create a race of vampires. However, other vampire stories do, especially Dracula, in which there is a fear that Count Dracula will people England with vampires. Another similarity is superhuman strength. Polidori explains this in The Vampire, and similarly does Fra Frankenstein's creature. From The Vampire, quoting, he, Aubrey, found himself in contact with someone, whom he immediately seized, when a voice cried, again baffled, to which a loud laugh succeeded, 
and he felt himself grappled by one whose strength seemed superhuman. Determined to sell his life as dearly as he could, he, Aubrey, struggled, but it was in vain. He was lifted from his feet and hurled with enormous force against the ground. End of quote. Certainly Dracula makes this clear where the professor, Dr. Seward, says, quoting, This vampire which is among us is of himself so strong in person as 20 men. He is cunning more than mortal. And later he reiterates, My friends, we are going into a terrible danger, and we need arms of many kinds. Our enemy is not merely spiritual. Remember that he has the strength of 20 men. And now moving to Frankenstein, and quoting from Frankenstein, I suddenly beheld the figure of a man at some distance, advancing towards me with superhuman speed. He bounded over the crevices in the ice, among which I had walked with caution. His stature also, as he approached, seemed to exceed that of man. And also later in Frankenstein, the creature says to its creator, Dr. Victor Frankenstein, Remember thou hast made me more powerful than thyself. My height is superior to thine, my joints more supple. They have another similarity, in that their lives are intertwined with, and even created from death. To create his creature, Dr. Victor Frankenstein says, quoting, To examine the causes of life, we must first have recourse to death. I became acquainted with the science of anatomy, but this was not sufficient. I must also observe the natural decay and corruption of the human body. Now I was led to examine the cause and progress of this decay, and forced to spend days and nights in vaults and charnel houses. My attention was fixed upon every object the most insupportable to the delicacy of human feelings. I saw how the fine form of man was degraded and wasted. I beheld the corruption of death succeed to the blooming cheek of life. Similarly, vampires live through causing death. It is only the death of their victims, at least as humans, by giving up their blood to the vampire that allows the vampire to continue living. In The Vampire, by Polidori, Lord Ruthven's victims actually die, as in Lefanu's Camilla, and in Marriott's The Blood of the Vampire. But in Bram Stoker's Dracula, the victim loses their humanity and becomes a vampire. Both Frankenstein and vampires are rejected by humans. Frankenstein's creature due to its ugliness, and vampires naturally because they are killers. There's an encounter with a mass of angry or hateful people bent on attacking or driving the creature of the vampire away. Dr. Frankenstein's creature says, The vegetables in the gardens, the milk and cheese that I saw placed at the windows of some of the cottages, allured my appetite. One of the best of these I entered, but I had hardly placed my foot within the door before the children shrieked and one of the women fainted. The whole village was roused. Some fled, some attacked me, until grievously bruised by stones and many other kinds of missile weapons, I escaped to the open country and fearfully took refuge in a low hovel quite bare and making a wretched appearance after the palaces I had beheld, beheld in the village. And he also says, I lay on my straw, but I could not sleep. I thought of the occurrences of the day. What chiefly struck me was the gentle manners of these people, and I longed to join them, but dared not. I remembered too well the treatment I had suffered the night before from the barbarous villagers. Polidori gives us such a scene in The Vampire, quoting, The glare of many torches penetrating through the hole that gave light in the day disturbed him. He instantly rose, and leaving his prey, rushed through the door, and in a moment, the crashing of the branches as he broke through the wood was no longer heard. So Shelley drew on the vampire tradition to create the horror genre, as well as creating a slew of original elements with her ingenuity. Thanks for listening. Please click the like button if you found this enjoyable or helpful, and check out the link to buy the Osti Classics edition of Frankenstein at Amazon and the other vampire stories referred to in this video, which are also published by Osti Classics.